Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros, it's Drew here, and today we're heading back to Knott's Berry Farm for a full in-depth review of Pony Express. Pony Express is a Zamperla motor coaster that opened at the park in 2008, actually exactly 12 years ago from when I'm recording this audio. Now this coaster acts as a supporting family coaster in the park and potentially as a first launch coaster for a lot of people and is definitely not the tallest, fastest, or most intense ride in the park. But this ride doesn't feature any inversions and at best just has some subtle ups and downs and some nice turning sections. But besides that, the only standout part of this ride is really its launch. But before going into more detail about this ride, let's talk about how to get there. So when you first get to Knott's Berry Farm, you'll be greeted by three different pathways at the front of the park. One to the right, which goes to Camp Snoopy, one down the middle underneath Silver Bullet's Cobra Roll, and one on the left that leads towards Ghost Town. Now for Pony Express, you're going to take specifically the left pathway through Ghost Town, walk through Main Street of this popular old destination, take a left at the livery stable, and pass on the left hand side of the town hall before turning left at the red barn and then right at mystery lodge and go straight past the entrance for calico river rapids and you'll find yourself at pony express now if you're having trouble seeing it it is bright orange track with a brown support color and of course every time it launches there will be this siren that goes off that is pretty distinct and easy to hear from certain parts of the park but excluding ghost rider this is the southernmost coaster in the park and is really the only coaster in the section that it's in. But now that we've spotted that nice little hang-in sign and have been kind of surrounded by the coaster itself, let's head into the queue. So the queue is actually quite ridiculously simplistic. You'll enter through this kind of crevice between a gated fence and the exit gift shop before turning right and then starting your way up this inclined ramp. But you'll end up making a couple U-turns back and forth while you're still heading upwards before just going straight for a very long time right next to the track itself. So you can get some awesome photos of the train passing by you as well as the picture spot right next to you. So if you are going to ride this at night, be wary of that flash because in line, it is quite a doozy. But another thing to be worried about, I would say, is there is not really any shade in this queue, besides in the station itself. And if this coaster is running on one train, or it's just a very busy day, be prepared for that. Now, getting up to the station, you'll go through a turnstile and be able to choose whatever row you'd like, from all the way in the front to all the way in the back, and unlike Accelerator, this is on a row-to-row -row basis, so you don't need to worry about having more than two people per gate. But do know there is a little more space up front for that front row, just for people to congregate. And sometimes looks may be a little deceiving with how long that wait is for the front. But besides that, you should be able to easily see it's only two or three rotations for each row, even on the busiest days. And before you know it, you're hopping on to take a ride on this mighty steed. Now these trains are very interesting in comparison to anything else in Southern California. But before we get to why that is, I do want to mention that these trains look absolutely awesome with every single seat being themed to a horse. They really play that part very well and look awesome. And something that I find a little cooler is that they have specific dust trails near their feet so it really looks like they're blazing by. Now here comes some of the odd things about this seat. You will literally mount these seats like a horse before leaning forward to grab onto handlebars like reins. 
Now this is definitely not a terrible position at all. I think it's actually quite comfy personally, but I know a lot of people find this to be very uncomfortable. But this is when the restraint will come up from what looks to be the horse's tail with a padded back section moved by an arm. Now this is where it gets a little worse for the restraint because if you get this thing tight, you are really pushed into the restraint with your lungs, your chest, and even potentially your nether region regions and it can make for a little bit of an uncomfortable ride experience. But not only that comes up, there are two restraints that will move towards the back of your legs just to ensure your legs aren't moving around or you're doing anything you shouldn't be. But one thing I've always noticed is with this coaster in specific is that they really like to secure you in your seat. Now I totally get it, safety is the number one priority, but a lot of the time you'll end up having your breath taken away and not in a good way. If this restraint was just on your lap and you just got pushed in a little bit, it's really not that big of a deal. But with this restraint pushing in on your back and then of course the main section of the seat being on your chest itself, it can really make you feel uncomfortable while riding. But now that we've got this restraint all tight and ready to go, let's head out for that launch. So as we get going on this wild ride, recreating the famous mail route across the Old West, you'll slowly roll out of the station and make a slight left turn before stopping fully and being able to attach to a catch car, which will soon vault you to high speeds. Now, what type of launch is this, you might be wondering? Well, believe it or not, it is a flywheel launch system, which even more interestingly is the second flywheel launch in the history of the park, with even the first ever flywheel in the world being located at the park at Montezuma's Revenge, just on the other side of Knott's. So that's something I always found incredibly interesting. Not only did they have the first hydraulic launch at the park, they also had the first flywheel and they're the only park in the world to have two flywheel launches. But soon after stopping, you'll hear some brakes release in front of you before hearing a ride off in the distance say launching. Immediately after you'll hear a squeak and then you'll be pushed towards a top speed of 38 miles an hour. Now to describe this launch, it's nothing like something like Accelerator or Full Throttle or West Coast Racers. It is definitely more of a push than a pull. The moment the launch starts, you'll be vaulted backwards before you start to level out until you get towards the end of the launch, which you'll feel that feeling again. So I've always found that quite interesting because it really does feel like a gentle push in comparison to a ridiculously aggressive pull. But you do hit 38 miles an hour in three seconds. So although the top speed isn't insane, the launch is definitely the most intense part of the experience. Now, immediately after this launch, you'll go into an interesting element that really is like an overbank turn, but with little to no banking. So if you're sitting in the front, you'll get a little bit of lateral force near the top of the element, which is the highest point of the ride at 44 feet tall. And on your right hand side, you'll get an awesome view of Calico Mine Ride, Hang Time, the Timber Mountain Log Ride, Accelerator, Sky Cabin, and everything that that side of the park has to offer. But a cool interaction you can get at this point in the ride is the Calico Railroad going right underneath you, which is something that I've always found pretty cool. But after this turn, you'll start diving down back over the train tracks before going back up and turning to the right. But once you've gotten high enough to go back over the launch track and back over certain parts of the station, you'll start turning to the right and what I think is the steepest part of the ride. But this is when you'll fly by the station, fly by that queue line, and feel like you're riding that thin line between the queue and the major walkway. But as soon as you get to the lowest part of that section, you'll find that camera on your left hand side taking your picture as you're taking your strides on Pony Express. Immediately after, you'll end up heading upwards yet again, banking to the left slightly and going over the main pathway. This, if you're looking for great pictures of this ride, is honestly one of the best spots because it goes right by that entrance sign. As it's cresting that hill though, it is going over parts of the Calico River Rapids, 
with again another really cool interaction that you don't get with any other ride. And of course, after you go up, you must come down yet again, banking to the right just a bit and coming as close to that other attraction as possible, which adds a really cool element to the ride, especially if those water blasts are going off at the right time. So don't be surprised if you get a tiny bit wet on Pony Express. Next up comes one of the most intense portions of the ride with just these quick snappy turns, which will bank left and then bank right as you enter a really cool tunnel section. Not only is the tunnel a nice bit of theming and a cool bit of shade, it blocks you from the outer world incredibly well. This tunnel really seems to be there for noise suppression as well as blocking that view of Western, which is the street literally about 10 feet away from Pony Express's turnaround. Now this turnaround, you'll actually pull a little bit of positive force, which is definitely kind of cool, especially if your restraint is not giving you pain. But after that, you'll go up before going slightly downward into the final brake run where you should definitely brace for impact. Because if not, and your restraint's already hurting you, it's gonna hurt you a lot more. Now that you've finished your exhilarating ride on Pony Express, make sure to grab your items from the bin on the left-hand side and head down that exit ramp before taking a left into the gift shop where you can find some nice gifts and even a Pony Express t-shirt or two, and of course, to see your on-ride photo. But I gotta say, while Pony Express is not nearly the best ride in the park, in my opinion, it's really not that bad. I know a lot of people hate it or just feel like it's kind of boring, but I look at it as the first launch coaster you should ride. Now, a major complaint that I always hear about the ride is that it's so short. It is actually the second shortest coaster at the park in duration behind Accelerator at 22 seconds, with Pony Express being only three seconds longer with a 25 second launch to break run time, which is quite sad, I would say. And personally, it would be awesome if there was another 500 to 1,000 feet of track, or heck, even just an element or two more. But I would definitely say it's worth the wait on quieter days when you're only waiting about 15 minutes, but on those busier days where it reaches upwards of an hour, I don't know if I'd brave it. But I will say, if you can get a comfortable restraint ride, you do feel quite free throughout a lot of the ride layout, and leaning forward can add to some of those elements. But now on to my rating system, which is a little unorthodox. I give a ski slope rating of what type of rider you should be before taking on Pony Express, a star rating for intensity and fun, and then an overall score out of 10. So to start off with that ski slope rating, I would actually say this is for beginner riders. Now what that means is it could potentially be one of your first coasters ever, and I do recommend that it be your first launch coaster. And I think it's a real great introduction to that feeling of going from zero to a higher speed quite quickly. Now, do I really think it should be your first coaster ever? Probably not. At the park, I would definitely start with something like Timberline Twister, Jaguar, or heck, even Coast Rider. So I would say Pony Express is more intense than all of those rides, but it is nothing close to Accelerator, Hang Time, Ghost Rider, or even Sierra Sidewinder. Now for intensity, I'm gonna give this two stars just because of that launch feeling, and of course the seating arrangement, just because it might be a little painful for some people. Now for fun, I'm also going to give it two stars. It's nothing ridiculously fun, but I will say it is very relaxing for me after that launch section, and it's just a great way to get some wind in your face. Or heck, even check out the scenery of the surrounding area. Now out of 10, I'm gonna give it a six, which is not a bad score at all looking at it. It is a family launch coaster and is even ridiculously short. And some would say it has some of the worst restraints out there, but I do still enjoy this ride for what it is. Is it a perfect 10? Heck no. But for me, anything above a four, I will gladly ride. But of course, don't take my opinion as gospel. Make sure to go ride it yourself and form your own opinion because heck, you might give it a one or even a 10. But make sure to let me know what you think of Pony Express down in the comments below. I'd really love to see all of your guys' thoughts. 
But thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. We're going to have more reviews, tier lists, rankings, and a heck of a lot more content coming up very soon. But until next time, we'll see you on the next ride.